character development, do you know what show does not come to mind? Miraculous Ladybug, that's what. It's pretty famous for its plotting pace and minuscule plot progression, and from the beginning of Season 1 to now, almost at the end of Season 5, it's clear to see that the story has progressed at a snail's pace. Our main ship has really only just set sail, and our minor characters have been spinning their wheels for, I don't know, a million years? Only the character of Felix has really achieved much across his arc, and he's had one of the more interesting character journeys across the show's history. And so in many ways, a lot of the characters do come across as a little bit pointless or half-baked or unnecessary. But there's no character for me that fits this bill more than Zoe. Zoe Lee. The transfer student from America that was introduced into the show during the fourth season. The seemingly secret daughter of Audrey Bourgeois, and some random off-screen character that will likely never have any relevance. Zoe made her debut in the fourth season of the show to serve as a foil to Chloe and replace her as the wielder of the Bee Miraculous. There was this whole mini-arc worth of episodes in that season that was largely dedicated to this storyline exclusively. And then after that, she sort of faded into the background to be used when she was needed, but with little to no relevance beyond that. And then in season five, she has had a role in a couple of episodes, most notably Kwame's choice, but it's largely been one of the minor characters of the show. And honestly, I'm sitting here thinking about this character, and I just can't get past how truly pointless she feels. Like, truly and utterly pointless. She serves such little narrative function, and honestly, it feels like she didn't need to be created or introduced or whatever. And there are a number of reasons that I feel this way, and so... I guess we'll just go through them. And you can't really have a discussion on this topic without talking about the metaphorical elephant in the room. And that is, of course, Chloe. So, in the seasons prior to the creation of Zoe, Chloe's undergone a pretty significant arc. And that, in and of itself, is pretty special, considering how plodding and slow a lot of the character arcs have been up to that point in the story. When we're first introduced to her character in Season 1, Chloe is the worst, like the actual worst. She's mean, she's entitled, and she seems to revel in making other people miserable and getting them akumatized. And on top of that, she had a deeply antagonistic relationship with Marinette, and thus, she pretty much was one of the show's major villains. And this was our status quo, until she got her hands on the Bee Miraculous during Season 2, and slowly but surely, she became a better person. Not a great person, but better than she was previously. And thus, she sort of carves out her own place on the team. A position as the sort of anti-hero who hero worships Ladybug, whilst also bullying her alter ego. It was an interesting dynamic, but not one that was really built to last. As over the course of Season 3, we see Ladybug pull back from giving her the miraculous as her identity had been compromised through her own need for attention. And thus, slowly but surely, their relationship too begins to break down. And Chloe throws in a lot with Hawkmoth to try and regain what she lost willingly being akumatized into Miracle Queen, and abandoning her heroic path forever. And so, her arc did the old switcheroo, and instead of being a slow burn redemption, it became a villain origin story instead, and, you know, whether you like it or not, that's not really all that relevant. Lots of people were fine with it, many also seemed to vocally hate it. They viewed it as throwing away a ton of character development, and yeah, it is what it is. And then in Season 4, we're introduced to Zoe, who is obviously being primed to pretty much replace Chloe's role in the story as the wielder of the Bee Miraculous. And I mean, it was pretty clear from the get-go that this was the case, as she's introduced as Chloe's half-sister, with pretty much the exact same character dynamics as Chloe has with her parents. A mum that obviously does not care about her, and a dad, or in this case a stepdad, that is kind and doting, although obviously not as bad as Chloe's version of the doting dad. But it's more a budget version just a good parent. And so already, she's feeling like a fan fiction copy and paste version of Chloe, where all her flaws are forgotten about, and she's inserted as the best friend to Marinette. Basically, she feels like she's meant to be the original version of Chloe from early development, where they were all friends. And so suddenly, you're being force-fed this new character, who's basically just a nice alternate universe Chloe. But instead of having the rough edges and the flaws, you know, the stuff that makes her interesting, the growth, the depth, the really cool and interesting character dynamic where she hates Marinette, but she loves Ladybug, you get Zoe instead, who's just nice to everybody, including her horrendous bully sister. A character who's essentially just a plain scoop of vanilla ice cream. She has no depth, no interest, no edge, nothing that really makes her stand apart from the crowd, apart from, you know, dyed hair. Ooh, and a beanie. Ooh, unique. Hell, they don't even play up the American side of it. She's just there. And whilst this would have been fine if she'd just been introduced to be a minor character to have one of the background miraculouses, the bee was one of the big ones. Ladybug, cat, they're the top tier. And then the lower tier beyond that was turtle, fox, butterfly, peacock, and bee. Each one of these wielders 
had a massive role in the story previously. There's the two main heroes for the ladybug and the cat, then the fox was Marinette's best friend and confidant, and then the turtle was Adrian's best friend and one of those characters that acts as a leader to the wider class, as well as previously being used by Fu, the mentor figure to Marinette, the butterflies used by the main villain of the show, and the peacock by the main henchman of the show. And now it's been given to one of the most intriguing characters in the history of the story. And so this left our B with, you know, our anti-hero, Chloe. But then it's taken away from her and given to a character of a limited importance, which is just... Ugh. But regardless, the scrapping of Chloe's arc and her replacement by, well, just her nice counterpart, that would have been fine by me if written correctly. And it did initially look like it had the potential to be a good development. It allowed Chloe to go in the direction that the writers wanted her to go, while slipping a new character into the mix who can replace her in the previous positions she filled and stimulate the development of new storylines and character dynamics. Sounds alright to me. But the problem is they introduce this new character and they show off how hard life has been and how shit her home life is. They hint she's going to be one of the core friend group and then in the end, she's shuffled into a different class and fades into the background, mostly just appearing when the other minor heroes do. And so suddenly, you come to this realisation that this is all she'll ever be. She's just nice Chloe and that's it. She doesn't have a storyline, she doesn't have development, she doesn't have much narrative importance. And I mean, it's clear that the story thinks she's important, as she was chosen to replace Cat Noir during Kwame's choice and all, but the remainder of her appearances in the season, they say otherwise. I mean, how is Chloe still getting more screen time than this character? Chloe, the most oversaturated villain of all, somehow is more relevant than Zoe. And even worse, you'd think that Chloe's big arc this season, therefore, would be about sticking it to Zoe. But it's not. She's teaming with Lila to make Marinette miserable, while Zoe's just a side story that she bullies and she moves on from. And so, Zoe isn't even able to be her sister's major storyline. What a joke! And so you get left with this feeling of discontent, because now it's clear that Chloe's whole arc, the failed hero's journey, was a bit of a waste because the character they made to fill that void after Chloe leaves is not living up to the hype or the expectations. And in the end, it just makes you shake your head at the writing because she has so much potential, so much she could do and stories she could have, both in her home life with her mum and her sister, or in the context of school or just heroism in general. But the development she's gotten isn't close to any of the other so-called major characters. She's just a background player who gets brought out from time to time, but she's nobody of any major importance. How she hasn't even managed to be Chloe's nemesis. And she's a fringe player to Marinette. A fringe friend. She's nothing compared to the likes of Alia or Kagami, who are really the major players when we're talking about episodes dedicated to Marinette's core friends. And in the end, it just all feels like a waste. A pointless waste. And there's no doubt in my mind that she's the biggest waste of potential so far in the show. She feels pointless and directionless. A character who serves no real role other than to be filler. And she's just there. She's been made solely to try and justify making Chloe a villain again, and it's just sad to see. But yeah, nothing really else to say about this now. And so I will just remind you that these are my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What do you think of Zoe? You like her? Hate her? You think she's boring and dull? Maybe you think I'm wrong. I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know.